St. Louis, Missouri has quickly attracted the entire chess world's attention. At the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis, fabulous events are organized, which have no counterpart in the rest of the world. And it's actually not just about the great playing conditions in the newly renovated exclusive venues and attractive prize pools that attract top place players, it's also about all the other stuff, like the talented, friendly players who give interviews and photographs that are published online, stuff that gives the audience a chance to match the chest to a face in an actual person. It's about how people in St. Louis have managed to make the comp competition a pleasure for the audience to follow, and that includes those of us who are basically on the other half side of the world. Last week we told you about the King vs. Queens tournament, in which, the, in which through online broadcasts produced by the extremely dedicated and talented chess journalist Macaulay Peterson, the audience got a window into the tournament. Jennifer Shahari and Yasser Sherban commented the tournament brilliantly and made the entire broadcast an exciting and interesting show. They brought life into the game and gave a voice to all the ideas and thoughts that players put into the games, but which are dismissed in the process. Things that shape the play in games, but that we, as we follow the games, usually don't get into. Thanks to Michael Peterson, we here have, we, we at Chess TV now, have the opportunity to share the experience of the Kings vs Queens tournament, because that is exactly what tournaments in St. Louis are, experiences. Welcome back to the St. Louis Chess Club. I'm Jennifer Shahadi with Grandmaster Yasser Sarwan, and we are at our final round of KVQ, A Battle of the Sexes. This one is the regular chess position. I think that's 518 and 916. Okay. <laughs> and we almost drew it last time, right? We almost drew something very similar to this. Yeah, very close. Just the Rook and Knights uh, in wrong squares. <laughs> exactly. So... What do you think, Yasser? Well, we now, already... well, now we're playing for honor. We've run out of excuses and explanations for why the women have performed so poorly. And now they can just let it all go and just play for the individual prizes uh, and, and go from there. We see that in the opening move, by the way, on move one, Hikaru's vast repertoire, he's pulled knight c3, won knight c3 out of his hat. And let me just see if more moves have been played. Out of his hat. <laughs> Out of his hat. <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were going to say there. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, d5 has always been the way to answer knight c3, in my opinion. And that was Irina's choice. Now, that could transpose to one of those Verisov type positions we were looking at earlier. But instead of d4, Hikaru played e4. Right. Now, Hikaru obviously is not going to be using his most treasured preparation in this event, especially now that he has sure. eight and a half out of nine. Sure. He's playing in some major events coming up, including um, Bilbao, which right. is split into two parts, right. Sao Paulo and Bilbao. Now, but what really surprised me is they fly first to the opening ceremony in Bilbao. Okay. And then to Sao Paulo and then back to Bilbao. Oh, wow. He's doing that. They, they don't do that. Right. Well, he... The players, rather. Right. Oh, all the players are not are not flying. No, Hikaru is doing. That's his schedule. Hikaru's schedule. Ah, uh, okay. So Hikaru decided to fly to the opening ceremony and and and, and back. But yeah, that's that's just that seems pretty crazy. Crazy to me. A crazy <laughs> flying schedule for Hikaru. Although you know, we know that he likes to fly and he likes to rack up his uh, chairman status or whatever the number one status Go is. Gold miles. Uh, yeah, you know. exactly. Okay. So after that, I think he's also playing in the London Chess Classic, right. and uh, Macaulay's going to be producing a show from there. So a really hectic uh, schedule for our star player. Although I should point out that. I did misspeak in some of our earlier broadcasts and say that he's a number one rated U.S. player at the moment. That's actually not true. On it's the current list, Gotakamski is number 10. Okay. And Hikaru is number 11 or 12. Oh, my goodness. I didn't realize that either. God has been playing yes. very well, very well indeed. He was a great leader for the American team in China, by the way. He's fabulous, fabulous on board one. So God has been playing very well. So. Yeah, maybe. And you wonder if it's maybe partly because of Nakamura that, you know, sure, the you got a little kick in the butt there. The competitive juices 
get flowing. Yeah, let me just say more moves have been played by Irina. I wanted to say something about the position, which was, funnily enough, I like playing the Kaoru Khan as black. And in this particular position, without the uh, moves d4, c6 being played, I think the move knight f6 is a really good move for black, actually. And the difference is, is that uh, black doesn't have to play c7, c6, but can actually use that tempo very meaningfully. You can play like bishop f5, or even the very bizarre looking queen d5 move. But I actually think black is doing very well in this position. Uh, that wasn't Arena's choice. She played knight d7, um, which in a sense kind of allows white to play d4, I guess knight f6, knight takes f6, knight takes f6. Mm, it's pretty balanced. What, what can I say? I mean, I look for Hikaru to find a way of imbalancing it, and he played bishop c4. So knight f6. And again, because black hasn't squandered an entire tempo with c7, c6, I think black's doing well. Although, is bishop takes f7 check crazy? Shall we have a look? What Nothing's do you think? Nothing's too crazy for Nakamura. Let's have, let's have some fun. Let's All right, have a so look. I better not play king e8 or you'll just trap my queen there. So imagine king g8. And then we have this line, knight e6, queen e8, knight takes c7. But this is different than that, uh, the regular lines that you see uh, in the Philidor, where the knight... Is already developed, so yeah, d2 so, is not such a so devastating here, threat. Yeah. Exactly, I could play queen f3. So, is it possible that in this position, after knight f6, well, bishop takes f7 check? Well, let's check again. So, king, king takes f7, knight g5, check king g8, knight e6, queen e8, um, knight c7. And we can also try the, uh, we can also try queen d8, yeah? Ah, queen d8 and just go after this go guy. Or something, yeah. yeah, b6, b f well. Or b5, yeah, sure. B uh, I'm not so sure. What's, what is this? I've got a threat. Hmm. Whoa, Queen F. Funny business. Maybe, maybe. And well, again, we can keep it. We can keep it going. Maybe B6 was better, so that I okay. could play Knight C5 here and kind of have myself anchored a little bit in case of that variation you pointed out. Queen F3, say Knight C5. Yeah, it's Bishop B7 threatening and stopping your uh, Queen B3 move. Uh huh. Um, but now, okay, so you. Mm. So maybe Queen F3. Well, queen f3, knight c5, sure. And still try, still just play like b4 or something here? Something funky? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure either anymore. I mean, it's really a mess, though, because g2 is also hanging at the end of these variations. Exactly. <laughs> Once we take on a8, so. Yeah. And this is the kind of thing that, you know, Nakamura... He not, thrives on this He stuff. loves this because his pawn is invariably getting the time pressure. Oh, I love that smothered make. Can we put that on the board? <laughs> yeah, I like Because that's the... not something you see too often. Right. Oops. Yummy. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, bishop c4 has, um, pardon me, maybe bishop c4 has stopped, uh, or certainly given arena pause, that maybe knight g8 f6 isn't the best. Maybe she should play this move. Does this move make some sense? Knight d7 f6, just to stop, bishop takes uh, f7 check in those variations. If the knight were to move, then e6 um, defends the f7 pawn. Still some ideas of sacrificing a piece for white exist. Shall we just go around and see how Katie's doing? Yeah, let's see. Uh, this is obviously a critical game this for the is, standings. Right. And it, it looks like we're having a lot of fun in this game as well. Right. Complete, complete Chaos early here. What happened? Okay. Wild. A okay. French so a French defense. we have and Lano playing for the main line. Right. Okay. Got a... So okay. This is the McCutcheon variation. This move Bishop C one has recently well, not recently, become more popular than the old standard Bishop D two. 
This used to be the old McCutcheon variation, like you would have queen coming out to g4, threatening this pawn, after a reasonable move like g6, then black would capture on d2. Lots and lots of games. I've seen Victor Korchnoi have some um, bad results on the black side of this particular position. It looks strange with the king on d2, but very oftentimes it's hard for, for black to get at that king. The difference is, is that in the line with bishop c1, which is played, <coughs> queen g4, the bishop on d2 is never under attack. Okay, knight e2. Now the, the real question is, can white take advantage of this advanced pawn g5 or not? If he doesn't, then black's going to be doing very well. So a3 and b4, that's the standard stuff and knight b5 is the standard stuff. So far, we're <clears throat> still in theory, f4. Knight c6, bishop e2. Uh, black never really wants to capture this pawn on, on um, f4 for, because of this move queen g7. This is a rather upsetting kind of move. And after bishop takes this rook, on well, f8 always becomes... Oh, sorry, there's bishop, bishop takes, takes e5. e5. Yeah, but you could maybe just take back one bishop to start. And then, exactly. I and apologize. then you have a really big threat of queen g7. And, and if black were to capture twice, uh, well, actually, queen g7, knight g6, it looks uh, a whole pretty, pretty gross after something like bishop h5, huh? Or just castles. Castles yeah. first, just and what you yeah. said, bishop h5. Mm, no, <laughs> I do. I wouldn't want to calculate this no, too much. You no, kind of feel that uh, we're not going to hold on to all the guys there. No, no something's <laughs> dropping. So Bishop B8. Now that I don't know if that's their theory or not, but that's a very ambitious move. Uh, basically, Black is saying, "I'm going to play A6, force your knight to go to D6, not a square you want it to go, and then I'm going to capture twice and win a win a second pawn." So, queen h5 by Kate. Interesting. Well, this has become a seriously big theoretical battleground here. And a slugfest. This game is going to be really exciting, you know, passing your seatbelts, last game of KVQ. Exactly. a6. Okay, so black follows through with his strategy. d3. Bishop takes d3, queen. Now queen f6 just attacking the rook on a1. Mm -hmm. okay. And castles. castles allowing Stopa to take on a1. And uh, Oh, this and is such a lovely way to, to um, finish, finish the, your, this battle, though, to be wild. playing such slashing chess. Wild. But does black have a choice if he doesn't take the rook? <laughs> yeah, I mean, why fun. else did he play queen f6? I mean, his per he played queen f6 very purposefully to win the rook, and... This is the kind of moment where you take it and pray, right? Because right. he's going to get attacked e even if he doesn't take it. Okay. And he has taken the rook. Okay. And it looks like Katarina has found some even more <laughs> incisive moves. Well, wh who knows? Either, either incisive or not good, but they look very exciting. Let's see. So he took on check. Now he throws in a check. Oh, he played knight e5. He didn't play rook f8. That was the main, maybe that was our culprit. We were playing okay. rook f8. He played knight e5 to defend the f7 pawn. And then she took. Okay, okay. so she's down a rook now. But she's got ideas. Oh, yeah. Bishop g5, bishop, g5 bishop f6. f6. Looks pretty. Bishop d7. So bishop, oh, not bishop. So queen g5 threatening a, a maiden one. Very ah, pretty. Always a nice... A nice little stopping castling, incidentally. And, uh, Very would, important yeah, stopping castling. I mean, it would be a really good move if you could queenside castle here. Right. Okay. <laughs> but how is black dealing with such a direct threat? He had to retreat. Ooh. And now she uncorked. Rook takes f7. Ooh. Wow. Well, if she played it, it probably works. Whoa. Let's check it out. So king takes f7. Uh, th let me just make sure that we have, they haven't moved on. 
This is the third game. Yeah. Ooh, she. So something, something. Yeah, rook takes f7, king f7, queen g6, check. All of that has been played. Right. And then she she backed up to f8. He backed up to f8 rather. Mm. And now she played the move h7, threatening bishop to h6, which would be a mate. I mean, mating. Right. Um. Wow. This this is just a, such a beautiful game. But what about queen a, queen a1 here comes to mind. Right. To stop that mate threat. Um, and now and now play like a girl you put this in your your book oh, yeah, and this, combinations this by be. ladies uh, you know okay if it so. works this has got to be in the follow-up book absolutely right second edition huh? <laughs> yeah second edition um, okay so what do we do now Queen H6 check okay let's have a look mm, I have Queen H6, but you can go back to G7 he can go back to G7 rather. can I can I try to run to the king side? Yeah, I mean, I, I was thinking even better, maybe just running, bringing, the, dropping the queen back to. Uh, drop. Oh, pardon me. Excuse yeah. me. Okay. Uh, queen, queen can retreat, blocking the check. You're yeah. right. Okay, that's two rooks, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, fantasy is nice, but. But it, but two so, rooks, Jennifer. So what two happens rooks. after each after each seven? Queen a one. What to do? What to do? Right. That's what we're anticipating. Queen a one. So I'm sure mm -hmm. Katie's got some clever idea up her sleeve. Not a lot of checks. I mean, let's see. Uh, if queen, so it, queen eight six checks really our only reasonable check, and then if queen g seven, queen f four, it seems like the king can kind of run, yeah. Well, uh, pardon me. Check queen. I'm just having this this fan. But it's two rooks. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't. I was thinking of bishop g6, uh, you know, trying to set up, you know, a really gross Pretty checkmate. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, after rook takes h7, black just gives back one rook and it, I think is a happy camper. Yeah. So what does she have in mind after queen a1? Gosh, I'm sorry. I'm blind. I don't see it. Queen a1. Very logical move. Did she need? Which has been played. Which has been played, I'm told. So. This was so close to working, but it seems that maybe this, uh, this was all calculated by Stopa. Well, I think somehow he's getting lucky here. Maybe she, mm, she, she did the wrong move order. I, H7 looks really strong, doesn't it, to you as well? I mean, you're threatening mate in one. Or not mate, you know what I mean. You're threatening queen g8 and mate. And hmm. how is black going to stop that? Rook f8. But she didn't do that. She, she went for rook f7. I'm wondering if she missed this very powerful defensive move, queen a1. She sacrificed two rooks to get here. And now I don't see her follow-up. I don't see her follow-up, Chen. Okay, she did give a check. We're just going to go back to the position that we saw. There was this queen a1 move, which we expected. Queen g5. And black is black to play. Let me just see. Copy three. I'm expecting bishop e8. Bishop e8 was played. Queen h4 was played. Uh, I, I've made an oversight that when I played bishop g6, bishop h6, I wasn't thinking about queen f6 check, but maybe, well, this is, no, no, no. This, I was thinking king f7, but I think that's asking too much. <clears throat> yeah, because like we can take and then play queen g5 or something. Precisely, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so you don't want to have no. even material. No, 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 no. <laughs> no that's no, not going to work. That's going to be a bad sign. <clears throat> so, Pardon me. wow, what a fascinating, what a contrast if this does end in a draw, because it'll be uh, compared to the relatively uh, dull draw, draw between uh, Feingold and Fierro. This is like the opposite. Yeah, I think Ben <laughs> Crazy was, draw. was very, very satisfied, very happy, pleased with mm -hmm. his performance here, and didn't want to spoil it by going overboard in the last game. So he made a, a smooth, easy draw with, with white. But uh, this is wild. I, it would be amazing if black's best move in the position was just to allow a repetition. 
You don't see that every day, being two rooks ahead. <laughs> two rooks, wow. Okay, can we just see what uh, Hikaru and um, Irina are doing? Wow. Hikaru Nakamura, everybody. Well, Congratulations, <laughs> nine and a half out of ten. I mean, wow. Yeah, Good very job. nice. And tell, wait, wait, uh, before you go, tell us yeah. about your plans. You're going to uh, Sao uh, Paulo and Dolbao? I'm going to Sao Paulo and Dolbao for the uh, Grand Slam final with uh, it's six player double round robin uh, with Anon, Carlson, uh, Aronian, Ivanchuk, and uh, Vallejo. So you're going to get nine and a half out of ten there as well, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see about that. That's, that's, uh, that. That would be really nice, but it's not going to happen. And you have a crazy travel schedule. You're flying into Bilbao for the opening ceremony, I uh, No, there isn't an opening ceremony, but I am flying to Bilbao anyway, just because I'm crazy. So, oh, um, that's why. I thought. Yeah, <laughs> I, I thought that sounded like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you just like to fly a lot. Who doesn't? It's great. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. <laughs> right. So after that, uh, I play. What do I play? Uh, I'll be playing the Tal Memorial in November. Um, ten, ten player round robin, and then London, London and then uh, Vikonze. So that's a uh, so busy ready. schedule. And you're going to be playing the very, very highest rated players and best players in the world during that right. whole four-month period, exactly. too. You feel ready? No, but I'll get there. All <laughs> right. Well, thanks again, Grandmaster Ricardo Nakamura. Fantastic result. Wow. And uh, such an exciting schedule ahead. It's always great to uh, watch his games and see him compete against the world's best. Oh, definitely, definitely. I did a... I, a kids camp here in St. Louis and... Uh, the U.S. Chess School. Yeah, the U.S. Yeah. Chess School. And uh, a, a big co topic of conversation was Hikaru's chances of becoming world champion. And I had to temper the kids by saying that there's a lot, a lot of great players and they don't all get opportunities and it's really hard to win the world championship. Yes, they would answer, but uh, he's favorite, right? <laughs> no, 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 it's really, really tough. Let me repeat myself. Aww, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but his chances are like 80%, right? <laughs> They're like, no, guys, come on, just a second. What am I, do I speak English? You're already smiling ear to ear here in the front row about that story. Yeah, it was but very yeah, sweet. He keeps, very he keeps the kids insta inspired, the oh, youngsters. Without question. Without question. So that's fantastic. Yep. And I just want to thank everyone for joining us and all our amazing guests throughout the week. We actually have some of them in the audience now. So Grandmaster Alexander Kostanyuk, International Master Mark Arnold. We have Martha Fierro here in the audience. Mm -hmm. um, we've just had such a ball talking to all these people. It's been you great. Know, about chess, 960, and everything. So and thanks to the St. Louis Chess Club and Rex and Jeannie for making it all possible. It was really a lot of fun. And to you, Jennifer. Oh, thank well. you. It was so much fun in the World Chess Hall of Fame. We also have Chris Bird, who's been the um, tireless arbiter here. <laughs> and finally, our producer, Macaulay Peterson. And I just want you all to keep your eyes open to stlouischessclub.org because there is going to be news on the upcoming U.S. Championship. That should be in the spring of 2012. And we'll definitely be doing a, a show from there. So Wonderful. Thanks, everybody, and this is Jennifer Shahadi signing off for Grandmaster Yasser Sarwan and the St. Louis Chess Club. KVQ, congratulations to the Kings, the winners. We want to thank Macaulay Peterson for the brilliant documentation. Next week, we'll be back again with a new episode of Chess TV with the continuation of the story from Skoklosti, so do not miss that.